In this video, I'm going to talk about a time management app that helped me gain some insights into my workflow. In my last craft video, I talked about advanced time management tips. One of those tips was to assign a value to your time. This is useful in a couple of ways. First, it helps you see where your time is best spent and where you have the potential to make the most money with any given task. Second, it helps you determine the real cost of your work. For example, to use easy numbers, if it costs you $1,000 to produce a novel, that might mean that it's $500 for cover design and $500 for editing. But what about the amount of time that it took for you to write it? When you value your time, that will help you determine the true cost of your novel. And lastly, it helps you determine that you're picking the right projects because you're putting that price on your time and always conscious of how much it's going to cost you in terms of labor. Last year, I used a great app to help me figure out all this stuff. It's called Office Time. Office Time is an app designed primarily for freelancers to help them keep track of projects and create invoices, but its time tracking function is particularly useful for authors. I'm going to walk you through the software, how I used it, and some things to keep in mind when you're tracking your own time. But before I do that, a warning. This video assumes that you have time management under control. If you have a problem sitting in the chair and you know, getting your writing done, this video is not for you yet. If you don't have that problem, this will give you a more nuanced understanding of what your time actually means. Also, this video is very numbers focused, so please remember, numbers aren't everything. At best, when you're using them correctly, it's just simply data to help you make better decisions. Hello and welcome to Office Time. Just want to give you a quick tour of the software and show you how it works before we get started. So here is where you can view all your tasks and set everything up so you can track your time. If you want to start a new task and track your time, just click this little button here and it'll give you a nice little timer sound and um, you can specify how much time you spend, choose categories for your work, and then talk about what it is. So if you want to say that you wrote 2,500 words, there you go. So another thing that's really nice about it is that it gives you some really great reporting. So if you click on that little button there, it'll tell you where you spent your time and it'll you know, break it out by categories, which is very helpful. I tend to be a very visual person, so it's nice to see where you're spending your time out visually. Now another great part of the software is that it allows you to, if you are a freelance writer, to make invoices. So if you wanted to invoice someone for your time, it would whip up a nice little invoice with the correct amounts and your time with a nice little letterhead on it and then send that out to your clients and you can make money on that. So that was something I used back when I did client work, which was very helpful. But for authors, where it's going to be helpful is being able to track your time. Okay, so let's get into the thick of it. First, let's make a few assumptions. First, if you want to make $100,000 a year, then your time is worth $50 an hour. But that's only when you're writing. For an explanation of that, see a previous video that uh, goes into that in greater detail. Now, if you're not writing, you're still have an hourly rate, right? But you're making less. So for the purposes of this video, you're making $25 an hour when you're doing anything but writing. So that'll help illustrate this example. Now, please keep in mind that these figures are just imaginary, okay? This video exists only to help you put a value on your time. When you value your time, you'll understand how much you're worth and it'll ensure that you're picking the right projects and that you're approaching your business in the right way. Please don't be those entrepreneurs that said, oh, well, I, you know, my time was worth a thousand plus dollars on this book, you know. Don't, don't be that guy, please. <laughs> just use this video to help you get into that mindset. Um, really important moving forward because there's a lot of numbers in this video, but just remember numbers aren't everything. There are a lot of things in your business that you're just not going to be able to track, but numbers are important because they help you make decisions. Okay, so this is a productive day, not unlike what I would have on a regular day at Author Level Up. So I wrote 2,500 words toward a novel, answered some emails from my cover designer, wrote another 2,000 words, updated my daily spreadsheet that I just keep with my business with all my word counts and things like that. Um, watched some writing videos on YouTube to help me with my craft, edited a craft video for Author Level Up, wrote some more, and then spent the rest of the night answering emails from readers and subscribers. So as you can see down here, we have our total time expensed, which is 4 hours and 47 minutes, and a monetary value of $205. That means that my time today was worth $205. Now let's look at a not-so-productive day which is like some days that I also have it off a level up. So in this day, I answered some emails, organized my inbox, watched some YouTube videos, but of a different variety, researching my novel, 
tweak Facebook ads, ended up in conversation with a friend. How many times has that happened on Facebook? Did a little bit of writing, not so much. Got writer's block, although I don't really believe in writer's block, but discovered that my homepage wasn't mobile accelerated, so I did this real quick to take my mind off of the project. Tweaked formatting for one of my eBooks. You can tell I really didn't want to write, right? Wrote 500 words, which is almost nothing. Answered some emails, sent out some review requests, wrote 100 words, and took a break. <laughs> Facebook. So, was this you know was this day productive? Well, yeah, it, it kind of was. I mean, I got some stuff done, but in terms of writing, not so productive. So if we come down here, we can tell I spent four hours and six minutes. So, you know, about an hour less than the previous day. And we're looking at about $121.25, which is significantly less than the $205 that was made on the productive day. So what does all this mean, right? So if we go back to our productive day and we look at the report, and we come down here and look at this beautiful little graph here, we can tell that 59 or 60% of my time was spent on writing, right? So that, that's very, very productive. We spent about 10% on marketing and promotion. I can live with that. That's not a bad thing to do. And 10%, you know, furthering my craft, which you can justify that, right? And 18% on email, which is a bit high, but, you know, I, with all the writing I got done, it's, it's okay. Okay. Now let's jump back over to the not-so-productive day and look at that report. So you can see the big amount here was spent in email. Over 40% of my time was spent in email on this day. That's probably a problem, right? But you don't really think about these things until you see them on a graph. And spent 12% formatting, which, you know, if you got to get it done, you got to get it done, right? 10% on business, 16% writing, which is just not very much at all, but it's something. 10% on marketing, which is about the same as the other day, and then 18 or 8% with no category, which I don't even remember what that was. A couple things to notice. I spent less time on this day and made less money. Where on the productive day, I spent more time and made more money, but I spent more time in the categories that mattered, which primarily was writing. So if you extrapolate that out, you know, $121 divided by 205 is 60%. So on a productive day, I'm making 40% more on average. Now, I'd be making 40% more per year if you do the math for what it would be for one year. So that's a significant amount of time that I'm wasting, for example, on that not-so-productive day. So I want to have more of those productive days. Sounds a little self-explanatory, but, you know, it, like I said before, a lot of this stuff makes a lot more sense when you see your own habits on a graph. Okay, now next I want to talk about how this could apply to how you write a novel or your next book project. So, for example... Um, I'm going to talk about three novels that I wrote last year over time. I won't name which novels these are but because um, there's really no point for that, but I think it'll help um, explain this a little bit more. So with book one, I extensively outlined that. I wrote several drafts and then edited several drafts. So most writers probably would write like this. Book two is a little bit more streamlined, a little bit less editing, um, not as much outlining because I was already invested in the world. So a lot easier to get out the door. And then book three, I wrote that completely into the dark. Let's look at book one, and we'll look at the statistics here. So you can tell here that if we come down to the pie graph, that for book one, I spent 67, almost 70% of my time editing that book. Okay, and then about 15% outlining, 16% writing, which is really small when you think about it. And, you know, formatting in a no category okay so overall I spent 47 hours and 53 minutes writing this book or not just writing it but producing it and that's a labor of about six one thousand six hundred twenty five dollars and one cent so if you add the cover expenses and the editing and all the other expenses that I had to produce the book you would get the real actual cost of the book which is what you really want to pay attention to. So what did I learn from this, right? Because when you're looking at numbers, it's important to, to think about that. Now, one of the things that I don't like, and this is just me personally, and Michael around's opinion only, I don't really enjoy self-editing. I never have. 
It's just never really been something that I've enjoyed doing because I've always wanted to get into the next story. So if we look at this here, I spent 70% of my time editing. And when I look back on it, it was pretty agonizing. I really didn't enjoy it. This wasn't something I wanted to do. And the next book is something I wanted to spend a lot less time doing. So what does book two look like? Well, if we come over to book two, we can see I definitely streamlined a lot of the time that I spent. So I spent 48 hours and 49 minutes, so roughly the same amount of time. We had roughly the same labor costs. But if you look at the graph, I only spent about 50% of my time editing this time around. And I spent about 30% of the time writing. So I spent more time writing, more time focusing on getting the writing right, and less time editing, and then just a little bit a little bit more time outlining in this one, which is a little weird for me. So still don't like that editing. So what happens with book three? Well, you can tell no outlining, no editing, because I wrote it into the dark. So we're looking at you know significantly less time, 10 hours less in producing a book. Um, roughly the same amount of money, but far more enjoyment from just only doing the writing. And I'm getting more words in as well. So not every author is going to feel this way, right? But I think it's important to use the numbers to confirm what you're feeling, because if there's any part of a project that you don't enjoy, doesn't it make sense to do less of it, right? And when you can see it all nicely plotted out for you, I think it just helps you make better decisions when you've got the right data. So what I found was that I spent only a fraction of the time on writing, which is what I should have been doing all along, and the rest on other production values that weren't really as valuable as writing the next book. So outlining, that's not new words. Editing, not new words. Formatting, just made sense to hire someone else to do that stuff for me. So with the first book, you know, the result was that all the productions ended up costing just about the same amount in terms of my time. So what was the point of editing? So when I'm not writing, I'm not growing. I don't enjoy editing or outlining. And, I, and the fact that they were taking me more time when I preferred to be writing was problematic. So I asked myself, how can I write more novels better and faster while still maintaining that same level of quality. So with the book three, the novel written in the dark, you'll notice that I spent 100% of the time writing it and less time overall. Therefore, when I'm factoring the cost into the real cost of the novel, it's actually a cheaper production. This is why the writing into the dark works, because you're only focusing on the tasks that make you money. Editing, in my opinion, is a time suck that will eat away your productivity. So am I saying not to edit? No. But just realize that you're trading dollars when you do it, because you're not actually producing more work. So why not just get it right the first time? Way more cost effective and a lot cheaper from a time perspective. And some people might disagree with this and you know that's fine. You have to decide what's best for your career and you know what you're most comfortable with. But when I'm looking at this, these numbers are only confirming what I'm already feeling. They help me make a simple decision to stop spending so much time on editing because it's costing me time, money, and energy that I could otherwise be putting into something else about the process that I enjoy. Plus I hire two editors anyway and Readers aren't pointing out typos in my books, so I made the decision to just focus on getting the book right the first time and then relying on my editors to help me eliminate typos and just go from there. Now, your logical next step, and I won't go into it in this video, but you'll notice that with the labor costs, they were roughly the same for all three books. Your next thing, if you were going to be looking at the numbers, would be to figure out how to get that down right? Because the more expensive your labor is, the more expensive your productions are, the more time you're spending on your books. So you would want to figure out a way to get that down to whatever the most reasonable amount is based on your writing style. So that would be your next step, which leads into writing better, writing faster, right? So there you go. That's how I personally took my time management to the next level. Now, I admit that you can just as easily do a lot of this stuff with a spreadsheet or even a pen and paper. It just depends on your personality and you know, how you work. But I'm the kind that prefers an app because it just makes things simpler. There's a tremendous amount of value in knowing the value of your time. When you do, it'll help you ask the right questions. And if you're like me, it'll help you also confirm what you like doing and what you don't like doing. And it'll help you justify doing more of the former and less of the latter. However you do it, I recommend that you determine what you're worth today. And don't undervalue yourself. This is one tip that will make you a pro overnight. That's it for this video. If this is your first time watching, I'd love to have you subscribe. And if this video helped you in some way, do me a favor and click that like button. Thanks for watching.